Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters Innovation, your source for all things innovation. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Brian Clayton on the line. He's co-founder and CEO over at GreenPal. Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam, thanks for having me on. Oh, man, Brian, so I'm excited to get into today's topic. So big tech um, crowd that listen to this, a lot of people listen to this that want to be in tech and don't know exactly how to do it. Uh, that being said, today's topic, starting a tech company with no tech background. You did it. We're going to get your keys to success today. Um, but before we do that, let's go a little bit further into what you're doing now. So as co-founder and CEO over at GreenPal, tell us a little bit more about your company, please. Yeah, so GreenPal in one sentence is the Uber for lawn mowing. So let's say you've got a yard, you've got grass, it needs to be cut. You just jump on our website or download the mobile app, and you'll get hooked up with a good lawn mowing service in less than a couple minutes. You can hire them right through the app, and they come out and mow. If everything goes well, you can just set them up for the whole lawn mowing season and just set it and forget it. So it, it kind of is a frictionless, contactless way to order lawn mowing services at a push of a button. Before I started Green Pal, I, was actually, uh, I actually mowed yards myself. I started cutting grass in high school. As a way to make extra money, my, my dad forced me to cut the neighbor's yard on a hot summer day one day, and, and it just stuck with me. I, I liked that business. I, I By the end of that first summer, I had a handful of customers, and I just kept cutting grass all through high school and all through college. By the time I was 25 uh, years old, I, I had a good little business going with, with 30 or 40 employees. Over a 15-year period of time, I grew that company uh, to over $10 million a year in revenue, over 150 people. And in 2013, that, that landscaping company was acquired by one of the largest landscaping businesses in the country. And so growing that business from zero to 10 million, I, I learned a lot about business, how to, how to grow and scale a team, how to build a sales process, and, and all sorts of, of things through trial and error. And I learned the landscaping business very well. Um, and after I sold it, I kind of got bored and I wanted to start my second business and I wanted to get back in the ring. And I, the idea for Green Pal came to me cause, just because I saw how difficult it was for homeowners to, to find the best fit lawn mowing service at the best price uh, without having to make 100 phone calls. And so I recruited two co-founders, and we started working on GreenPal. And so I had to make the transition from a, a traditional uh, hand-to-hand combat in the trenches style of business that I was doing for 15 years to a, a strictly tech startup, a tech-enabled marketplace. And that was a, that was a process. That was a process to – for me to teach myself the skills I needed and for my co-founders to do the same. And uh, it was daunting. It was hard, but it, I'm glad that I did it because, my, you know, starting this company is what's forced me to become smarter and acquire these skills. Man, that's awesome. Um, what what a story! And uh, um, I'm guessing when your dad made made you mow that mow that first neighbor's lawn, he had no idea what you were gonna do with it, huh? <laughs> yeah, he just wanted to get me off the couch and quit playing uh, Mario Kart. <laughs> And thank God he did, uh, because man, I don't know, I don't know what I would have ended up uh, doing if he hadn't forced me to go cut the neighbor's grass. Man, that's a, an absolutely amazing story, and uh, so thank you for sharing that. Had, had to give Dad a shout out on that one. That's funny. Uh, so <laughs> let's um, let's uh, let's dive further into today's topic. So now, and you kind of gave, gave us some of the backstory, which is great. So you know, you built a big company. You you had you were you know obviously operating it. You sold it. Um, 
and now you decide to create a tech company, which you had not had background in. So not an easy thing to do. There's a lot of people listening right now that are that have a background or some that don't, and they're like, you know, I, I have some ideas too. I want to do some things too. I mean, where, what was your secret? Because this is not an easy thing to do. And, and, I, and, I, and if I may, I'm not claiming I know the most about mowing lawns, but I would argue that that's not a, you know, that's not a highly technical business in terms of like the day-to-day process. I mean, like when you're going out to do it. I mean, I'm, no, I'm sure it is. I don't want to overspeak on that because I don't know. But um, it's not like you're a software engineer, or and you don't. So it's something completely two different, completely different languages. So how, how did you do this, man? This is a great story. Yeah, the, the two different worlds uh, that for sure, and it was my naivete that that got me started. I didn't realize how difficult the, the technological side of it was going to be. I didn't really understand. I didn't know what I didn't know. And so, you know, I get a lot of folks, uh, I do some mentoring in, where I live in Nashville for free for business owners and, and, and new entrepreneurs, and everybody's got an app idea. You know, I want to start an app for this, but they don't have any technical background. And so they don't really know, can they learn the, the technical skills uh, to pull this kind of thing off? And the answer is yes, the short answer. Uh, but the, it's going to require some sort of irrational obsession from you as the entrepreneur to breathe life into this idea and to bring this thing to life. Because mm-hmm. for me, it took, it took my co-founders and I like three years to learn the skills that we needed to learn to design software, to, to build the software, to how to build a mobile app, how to market it, you know, things like search engine optimization and, and such. So, um, yes, it is possible. And, and the thing is, is that if today, uh, it, you know, these, these, this knowledge is more accessible than it's ever been. You know, when I was starting my first business, we didn't have YouTube. Uh, we didn't ever have podcasts like this one. We didn't have online courses that were easily accessible. Now, fast forward to 2020, you can learn any skill you want to learn so, so long as you are uh, ambitious enough and, and driven enough to do it. And so my co-founder, uh, who had a little more technical kind of orientation than I did, he, he uh, went to a boot camp, a six-month boot camp, nights and weekends and learned back end programming and then I studied online uh front end programming. So things like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, uh and Angular. And so over like two years I was able to teach myself the skills I needed to build the front end side and my co founder the same thing on the back end side. And and so we were able to do this only because we were just so driven to see this thing become successful and we knew it would be successful and and we just would not give up like we were just relentless about pursuing the dream and and you know for for many years we were working 70 80 sometimes 100 hour weeks because 40 or 50 hours was working in the business and trying to get it going and then the other 40 or 50 hours was just toiling over online classes or in-person classes to learn the skills we needed to learn to reinvent ourselves as tech entrepreneurs had I known how difficult it was going to be, I may have been too scared to start. So the naivete was kind of an asset in the early days. Uh, but luckily, my my two co-founders and I were just relentless and, and kind of looked at it as though uh, as an infinite game, as something that we would just be at forever. And like success was the only option. And the only way to win was, was just to not give up. And in, in the first three or four years, it was an exercise of faith. Man, that's amazing. Um, so obviously, um, you know, when, when you go through any type of process like this or learn any type of new skill or even business model, like once you're on the other side of it, which you are now in running the business, you know, you, you can look back and say, wow, I could have did this. I could have did that. If you could have a conversation with the Brian that was just getting uh, started and you can't say don't do it, um, that's that's not an answer. If you can have a conversation with the Brian that was just getting started on this tech journey and just kind of like you know do some uh do some uh hindsight there what would you what would you tell them like what kind of advice would you give them on, on the, what what's ahead of them yeah uh learn faster experiment more and delegate sooner so uh i don't believe that you know a lot a lot of times uh entrepreneurs will come to a situation like this say well i'll just pay somebody to do that well actually we did uh the first year we didn't know the first damn thing about writing code so we paid a development agency in Nashville, $150,000 to build the first version. We launched it and it was a total, utter failure. 
It was hard to use. Nobody could figure out how to use it. Uh, it. People abandoned it the minute they tried to use it. And we realized that for us to even play this game, we're going to need to be able to build our, our way through it. We're going to need to be able to uh, execute at, internally. And so uh, I don't believe you can just outsource these things at the start. However, you do need to acquire the skills. And as you acquire them become and become competent, then you can begin to delegate. And so that is one thing that a mistake I made in the early days was I spent too long in the business and not enough time on the business. And if I could do it all over again, I would have learned these things quicker and then I would have I would have delegated them from a position of, of strength, uh, from a position of stewardship and, and not one from uh abdication. So when we first launched the first version and we paid that development shop hundred and fifty grand it was, it was, we were like abdicating it. Like we didn't know how to do any of it. We didn't stand it. Like here, you guys handle it. And that's why it failed. Now fast forward seven years in, we're going to do $20 million in revenue this year. We have hundreds of thousands of people using the platform and we have a team of 30 engineers. We're able to delegate these, these tasks and, and, and build out the product from a position of, of authority and strength because we've done it ourselves. It's really hard to delegate something that you don't know how to do and you've never done yourself. Man, I can relate to that so much, and I feel like every entrepreneur that's built anything like that, that they're not just, uh, let's just say that they're not looking to try and just get out of and sell in a couple of years and, you know, you know, put the cogs together, so to speak, which I'm not, I'm not talking about that model, meaning I, I much respect the people that do that. They create a lot of value in the market, but we're not talking about a SaaS product that you're looking to turn around in like three years or four years. Right. We're talking about something that like you built your last business, you, you know, you are, you are in the business working it. So for somebody that's in the business working it, like, um, I, I can completely relate. I'm like, I couldn't have built this media company if I hadn't done the stuff myself. I couldn't like editing all these other things, content, this, that I had to like pay those dues and do it. You, I couldn't just outsource that. Even if I had infinite money to some creative agency and say, Oh, make this. And this is what I want to do. Cause I don't even know what I want at that point. Right. Like you don't even know what Absolutely. you want. You're just like, you're like, I want to make the Uber of law. I'm, I'm picturing this conversation when you know nothing about technology and you're like, I want to make the Uber of lawn care do it. <laughs> and, and they're trying, not saying they want, they wanted to do a bad job. Right. But they can't, no, they, can't you, you have, they can't have your vision. They can't have your vision. If they had your vision and they could build a company that was doing 20 million in revenue, they wouldn't be selling like the ability to, to, to build that software is different. <laughs> like you, you can't, like so why would they do right. it? You are so right. And we literally, like how naive we were. I mean, you got to think, I, I had a business that was doing $10 million in revenue uh, before this. So I thought yeah. I, I, I thought I was a sophisticated businessman. And, and so I came to this equation thinking, yeah, we'll just build this and, like, we'll pay somebody to build it and then we'll market it and we'll just be off the races. And it was a total failure. And to your point, yeah, you can't just, like, say, yeah, build this idea I have and let me have it when you're done doesn't work that way because uh, a lot of times when you're creating a tech product, you're inventing something that's brand new that's never been done before. And so you don't really, you have an idea what it is, but it's like, it's, it's, it's built on all of these false assumptions and, and, and none of it's validated. And so therefore you have to be able to like cycle through trial and error and like iterate mm -hmm. very, very quickly uh, over and over and over again. Like we're seven years in, we, we are still removing friction on making the process smoother, easier, and more reliable seven years later and millions of transactions later. And so uh, a tech company and a tech startup and inventing a product from scratch, you're going to have to be able to execute yourself. And if you don't know how to do it, it's okay. You can learn, but there's going to be, there's going to have to be some sort of like driving obsession to get you through that and something that's other than money. That's awesome. Love it. And I couldn't agree with you more, Brian. So I can talk to you about this all day long, but we're about out of time on this one. But I do want, if, some, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about Green Pal or they want to follow you and your content and just connect overall, I mean, what's the best way for people to do that? Yeah, so uh, life's too short to cut your own grass. You can just hire somebody on Green Pal in less than a couple of minutes. Uh, you can download Green Pal in the App Store or Play Store or go to yourgreenpal.com. Anybody who wants to get at me, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram, Brian M. Clayton. Let's check that out. I'm pulling up Twitter right now. Everybody else that's listening to this, do the same. I'm going to give you a follow right now. Let me find this uh, little Twitter. All right, so what's that handle again? Brian M. as in Michael Clayton. Brian M. Clayton.
Brian M. Clayton. Oh, pops right up at Brian M. Clayton. I'm following him. I'm following Brian because uh, he's an awesome entrepreneur, and I want to learn from him. So uh, everybody else, go over there and uh, and check out Brian too. Um, so Brian, been awesome having you on the show. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Innovation. And definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Brian, thanks again for coming on the show. Hey, thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it.